Morocco's Minister of Industry and Trade, Riyad Mezou, says the country is set to attract more electric battery manufacturers to meet in the rising demand for This project is a monumental step for Morocco, positioning us at the forefront of the electric mobility revolution in the region announced Prime Minister Akanach. Africa is stepping into the electric vehicle race with a $5.6 billion shockwave. China and Morocco are building the continent's first battery gigafactory, a project so massive it could reshape global supply chains, power millions of EVs, and position Morocco as Europe's closest energy partner. Construction is underway, with production expected by 2026. Chapter 1. The $5.6 billion shockwave a $5.6 billion factory in Africa? That's not just a number on paper, that's a global statement. Morocco is stepping into a league most people never thought an African country would enter this soon. According to Morocco World News, this new project is being led by Goshen High Tech, a Chinese battery powerhouse. It's not some small-scale plant producing parts, it's a full-blown gigafactory, the kind of facility that powers the future of transportation. Think about what this means. Africa has long been recognized for its abundant supply of raw materials, including cobalt, manganese, and rare earths. But now, instead of shipping those resources away for others to process, Morocco is saying, we're going to be part of the finished product too. That shift is huge. It tells the world that Africa doesn't just want to export, it intends to manufacture, innovate, and capture value at home. And the ripple effect is massive. The moment the news broke, analysts started comparing Morocco's move to the rise of battery hubs in Europe and Asia. Suddenly, Morocco is no longer on the sidelines of the green transition. It's in the headlines, and for the right reasons. Chapter 2. Why Morocco was chosen So why did Goshen pick Morocco and not somewhere else? Geography is the first answer. Morocco is a stone's throw from Spain, right across the Strait of Gibraltar. For companies trying to serve Europe's electric car market, Morocco is practically next door. That kind of proximity cuts costs, shortens shipping times, and makes Morocco look like a strategic jackpot. But that's just part of the story. According to Reuters, Morocco has trade agreements with the European Union, meaning batteries made in Morocco can move into Europe under favorable terms. In a world where tariffs and trade wars can make or break industries, those agreements are gold. And then there's the energy angle. Morocco isn't just talking about renewables, it's building them at scale. Massive solar farms in Warzazade, wind projects along the coast, and plans for green hydrogen all give the country credibility. If you're building batteries, the beating heart of clean energy, it makes sense to do it in a country that actually walks the talk on sustainability. Finally, let's not ignore politics. Morocco has been positioning itself as one of Africa's most stable and investment-friendly nations. The government actively supports industrial projects, offers incentives, and has been rolling out the red carpet for global investors. For Goshen, it's not just about location, it's about finding a partner willing to go all in. Chapter 3. Meet China's Battery Giant Now, let's talk about the main player, Goshen High Tech, or Guaxuan. If you're not deep into battery tech, the name might sound unfamiliar, but inside the industry, it's a heavyweight. According to Reuters, Volkswagen has a significant stake in Goshen, which instantly gives the company credibility in Europe. That partnership matters because European automakers are scrambling to secure stable battery supplies. Goshen already has operations in China, Germany, and the US, but this Moroccan deal is its first major leap into Africa. And it's not just a business expansion, it's a signal. Goshen is showing the world that it wants to dominate beyond Asia. By picking Morocco, it's securing a position in a region that has resources, access to Europe, and untapped growth. For Morocco, having a partner like Goshen is a double win. First, it means access to advanced technology that local firms might not have yet. Second, it gives Morocco instant credibility on the global stage. If a Volkswagen-backed company is betting billions here, that's a strong endorsement. But there's also a deeper layer. Goshen is part of a larger Chinese strategy to spread influence in clean tech. China already leads the world in solar panels, EVS, and batteries. By building in Morocco, it's not just exporting technology, it's embedding itself in Africa's industrial future. Chapter 4. How big will this factory be? Let's talk about scale, because this is where the story really gets impressive. 
According to Reuters, the Kenitra plant will begin with an annual capacity of 20 gigawatt hours. To put that in perspective, that's enough to power hundreds of thousands of electric cars every single year. But the factory is designed to grow. The long-term plan is to increase production to 100 gigawatt hours. That number puts Morocco in the same conversation as Europe's mega plants under construction in Germany and Sweden. We're not talking about a regional side project. This is Morocco aiming to stand shoulder to shoulder with global leaders. And why does scale matter? Because in the battery world, bigger means cheaper. The more batteries you can produce, the lower your cost per unit. That's how Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada changed the EV game in the US. Morocco is trying to replicate that same formula, but with the added advantage of being right at Europe's doorstep. Another thing, this isn't just about cars. A facility of this size could also support energy storage systems, the kind used for solar and wind projects. Think of Moroccan-made batteries storing clean energy in European cities or African villages. That's the level of ambition behind these numbers. Chapter 5. The Race to 2026 So, when do we see this factory in action? According to Reuters, production is expected to start in the third quarter of 2026. That's a tight schedule. Less than two years to finish construction, train workers, and get supply chains up and running. The timeline shows how urgent the battery race has become. Automakers in Europe needed these supplies yesterday. Governments are pushing strict deadlines to phase out combustion engines. For Morocco and Goshen, the clock is ticking and every delay could cost billions. But let's also be real. Mega projects like this don't come without risks. Getting skilled workers trained fast enough, building the infrastructure around the factory, and sourcing raw materials are all challenges that could slow things down. Even financing a multi-billion dollar project takes careful coordination. That said, Morocco has already proven it can deliver big projects on time. Just look at its renewable energy rollouts and the high-speed rail system connecting Tangier to Casablanca. This track record gives confidence that 2026 isn't just wishful thinking. If all goes according to plan, Morocco won't just be turning on a factory in 2026. It'll be flipping a switch on a whole new chapter for Africa in the clean tech revolution. Chapter 6. Jobs, Growth, and Local Impact Let's bring this story down to ground level. What does a multi-billion dollar gigafactory mean for people in Morocco? According to Morocco World News, this single project could create thousands of direct and indirect jobs. We're not just talking about engineers working inside the plant. It stretches out to construction workers building the facility, truck drivers moving parts, suppliers providing raw materials, and even service industries that spring up around the workforce. And Morocco's leadership is directly tying this project to national development. King Mohammed VI has repeatedly emphasized industrial growth and renewable energy as cornerstones of Morocco's future. Government officials like Industry Minister Riyad Mazour have also been vocal about turning Morocco into a hub for electric vehicles and advanced manufacturing. Having high-level political backing makes a huge difference. It's not just a company moving in, it's a national strategy local industries stand to gain as well. Chemical producers that supply electrolytes, logistics firms that handle transport, and energy providers that will power this massive plant all get pulled into the value chain. In effect, one factory becomes an engine pulling entire sectors forward. For Morocco, it's a long-term play to transform the economy and anchor high-value jobs at home. Chapter 7. Africa's First Gigafactory Explained now, let's address the big claim. Why is this being called Africa's first gigafactory? According to Reuters, Morocco already has car assembly plants, and countries like South Africa have seen limited battery-related projects, but none of those come close to the sheer scale of what's being built in Kenitra. The key is in the numbers. A gigafactory is defined not just by what it makes, but by its capacity. Morocco's plant is projected to produce tens of gigawatt hours of batteries per year, a scale Africa hasn't seen before. Other nations may have pilot projects or smaller assembly lines, but nothing operates on this level. That's why analysts and media call it a continental first. It's also symbolic. Africa has often been described as the continent of raw materials, cobalt from the Democratic Republic of Congo, manganese from South Africa, and lithium from Zimbabwe. This project shifts that narrative. Instead of just digging up minerals and shipping them abroad, Africa is finally hosting the kind of advanced, large-scale manufacturing that adds real value. It's a turning point, 
and Morocco gets to wear the crown of being the pioneer. Chapter 8 Europe can't ignore this. Here's where the story crosses borders. Europe According to Reuters, European automakers are under massive pressure to cut emissions. Strict regulations are forcing companies like Volkswagen, Renault, and Stellantis to accelerate their EV production. But there's a problem. Europe doesn't yet have enough battery factories to meet demand. Enter Morocco. Thanks to its trade agreements with the European Union, Moroccan-made batteries can move into Europe under favorable conditions. That's a huge competitive advantage. Batteries from Asia face long shipping routes and, in some cases, tariffs. Morocco, on the other hand, is just across the Mediterranean. Batteries can leave Canitra in the morning and be in Spain by night. And here's something even more strategic. Energy security. European leaders have been nervous about depending too much on China for critical supplies. By supporting a plant in Morocco, Europe diversifies its supply chain while still benefiting from Chinese expertise. It's a clever balancing act. Keep China close enough for technology, but keep production geographically closer to home. This is why Europe can't ignore Morocco's Gigafactory. It's not just about cheaper batteries. It's about political leverage, stability, and long-term energy security. Chapter 9. The Roadblocks Ahead Of course, no project of this scale guarantees smooth sailing. According to Reuters, there are several hurdles Morocco must overcome before the first battery rolls off the line. The first challenge is raw materials. While Morocco has some reserves, most of the key minerals for batteries, like lithium and cobalt, will need to be imported or secured through supply agreements. That adds complexity and risk. Then there's the financing. Even though the total project is valued at $5.6 billion, rolling out that money in phases, securing loans, and managing construction costs will test both investors and the Moroccan government. Workforce training is another hurdle. Thousands of jobs sound great, but skilled battery engineers don't appear overnight. Morocco will need partnerships with universities, technical schools, and global experts to develop the human capital needed to run a gigafactory efficiently. And finally, there's competition. Europe itself is rapidly building its own gigafactories. Asia continues to dominate. Morocco has a golden window of opportunity, but it won't last forever. If delays push the timeline past 2026, it risks losing its competitive edge. Still, the political support is strong. Leaders like King Mohammed VI and industry officials are backing this project as a national priority. That kind of commitment can often be the difference between a dream on paper and a factory that changes history. China and Morocco's $5.6 billion battery gigafactory isn't just about making batteries. It's about Africa joining the global EV race, creating jobs, and reshaping supply chains. Can Morocco deliver on this ambitious timeline, or will Europe's gigafactories take the lead? Comment your thoughts below, like, and subscribe for more updates on global EV developments.